The one question I've been asked many times during my flair bartending career is, can you do it with full bottles? Stick around and find out. Before we begin, let's see if you can tell the difference between these two styles of flair. First one. Second one. If you know the difference between those two styles of flair, put your answer down in the comments box below. And you are one of the lucky ones where you're halfway there understanding what the difference is between working flair and exhibition flair. To understand the difference between these two styles of flair, we're gonna look at the volume of liquid inside of the bottle. Because that's essentially what it comes down to. However, with working flair, we can dive a little bit deeper into what it actually is, which I'm gonna go through a little bit later on in the video, so make sure you stick around until the end to find out what that's all about. This is what we call a working flare bottle, and this is what we call an exhibition flare bottle. Now I'm gonna put this one away for now, and we're just gonna focus on this working flare style bottle. Now at the beginning of the video, I asked to see if you could tell the difference between two styles of flare bartending. One of the styles was working flare, and one of the styles was exhibition flare. So this bottle is about half full. It does pour, okay? And these are the types of moves that you can perform with a working flare bottle. We're just gonna use one bottle and one cocktail shaker. So when we're performing working flare, you'll notice that the bottle is not spinning. We're throwing the bottle flat, which I'm gonna to explain to you in just a moment. We wanna ensure that that liquid stays as still as it possibly can inside that bottle, and it all comes down to how you throw it, and that means not spinning it on its axis, which, like I said, I'm gonna go through with you in just a minute. Just to show you the liquid is still there. Woo-wee! So when we're talking about working flare, we're generally talking about a bottle which is half full of liquid. So when the bottle is half full of liquid, we have to understand how to throw the bottle correctly, and that's called throwing the bottle flat, which means not putting any spin on the bottle. So I have a practice bottle here. This is one of my own uh, Tom Dyer practice bottles. If I'm spinning the bottle, I'm doing this. If I'm to do this with a working flare bottle, I get oh yeah, spill. So we have to learn to throw that bottle flat without any spin on the axis of the bottle. So you see how the bottle almost stays in the position of where I throw it to ensure that the liquid is staying pushed inside to the base of the bottle. You can perform all of these moves with a bottle which is full up and obviously empty as well. But if you work on that general rule of thumb that a working flare bottle is half full, then you're working towards becoming a professional flare bartender. The best way I can explain flaring with a bottle which is half full, when you were a kid and you were either at the beach or in the back garden and perhaps you had a bucket, have you, did you ever pick up that bucket of water and spin it around and the liquid is pushed inside the bucket and doesn't, doesn't come out? Well, it's exactly the same principle here. If I grab hold of this bottle and spin it, you can see that the liquid is pushed to the base of the bottle when it doesn't spill. So with working flare, we just have to think about this exact technique, but every now and again, we're letting go of the bottle and catching it in the other hand, in a different way, or a different position, or a different throw, or a different catch. So working flare is also a term used to describe flare bartending whilst working behind a bar. Now obviously when you're working behind a bar, the bottles are gonna be half full, full up, or almost empty. But if you treat every single bottle as if it's half full, then you're not gonna go wrong when it comes to spinning or not spinning the bottle. Obviously the more experience you become and the better you get, you're gonna be able to judge the levels in the bottle to determine whether you can perform exhibition flare or whether you can perform working flare with that bottle. Okay, let's swap this bottle with an exhibition flare bottle. So exhibition flare, that's essentially flaring for an exhibition, whether it's competition or a stage show. 
But when we're talking about an exhibition flare bottle, we're talking about a bottle which is set up, ready to perform moves like this. With exhibition flare, as you can see, I can spin the bottle, I can be more technical with my moves, and basically be, have a lot more freedom with what I can do with my flare bartending moves. So with an exhibition flare bottle, we generally have about one shot of liquid, one shot of alcohol inside the bottle. When you compete professionally in competitions with the World Flow Association, I think the minimum is 15 milliliters, which is about half an ounce or half a shot. That allows us to be able to perform those moves that I just showed you, plus a hell of a lot more extravagant type moves, which are only gonna be possible with a bottle which has got this much liquid or is completely empty. Exhibition flare, as I said, is the show flares, the showing off, is the one where you can perform the big bold moves and understanding how much liquid you need inside the bottle to be able to perform those moves is important. Any more than one ounce and you start to limit the amount of moves that you can perform. So make sure when you are trying to do exhibition flare moves and you are using a bottle such as this, which is a plastic bottle, a practice training bottle, you need to make sure you can transfer the moves that you're learning on this bottle to a real glass bottle with a pour spout and with liquid. So it's very important that you do practice with both, but make sure you're confident with the practice bottle first before you move on to your exhibition flare style bottle. Exhibition flare is also the reason we have bottles such as this, a practice training bottle, and these are essential to anybody who does want to practice flare bartending. They may seem expensive when you get a bottle like this. I think I sell this one on my website for 35 pounds. But when you consider that this bottle will literally last you your entire flare bartending career, I mean, it will last forever, unless you give it to your dog and your dog chews it up. It's unbreakable, it's a little bit squashy, uh, it's safer on your head and your body, and it's a great object for anybody wanting to practice their flare bartending moves. To finish off, when we're talking about exhibition flare, exhibition flare is not the type of flare that you would see behind a bar. And to understand when someone's coming to your bar, they're, they're coming there to get a drink, not to see your fantastic new move that you practiced in your garden. So performing the right amount of flair is imperative, especially when you're working behind a bar. So just to recap, when we're talking about exhibition flair, we're talking about a bottle which has the maximum of one shot of liquid inside. When we're talking about a working flair bottle, we mean a bottle which is about half full of liquid. This one, you can spin, this one, you can't, and you have to throw it flat. Now to finish off, some people may be saying, but Tom, what about this new craze called craft flare? Well, the term craft flare, I believe was coined by Bartender HQ back in about 2015 on a blog or a podcast in which he did. I'll try and leave a link in the description below of where you can see that. But for those who don't know, craft flare, craft flare is essentially working flare. Working flare in the sense that you're performing flare whilst you're working behind the bar. But how we differentiate from working flare with bottles and shakers to craft flare working flare is craft flare is generally performed with items such as strainers, jiggers, tin on tin shakers, uh, bar spoons, julep strainers. Uh, it can be fancy pours with the bottle. But essentially what you're doing is you're not throwing around glass bottles because things like this can happen and they do happen and they will happen. So craft flare mostly focuses on items and objects which are not gonna break and is not using the expensive alcohol that you have behind the bar. So there we go, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's helped explain the difference between working flare and exhibition flare. And for anybody who is interested in learning some flare moves and getting more involved and you want to get your hands on one of these practice bottles, there is a link down below where you can buy one of these from my website. We ship worldwide. And as I said, it will last you forever. Uh, 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 and it doesn't hurt. Well, maybe a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. I do also want to say mm, massive thank you to all of these legends, legends, right here who do support me over on Patreon. You guys are really helping me out, and if anybody else wants to be involved in my Patreon community, there is a link down in the description below too. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate everybody who's stopped by to, to check this video out. 
Don't forget to hit the like button. What that does, when you like it, it helps show YouTube that you like it and then pushes that video to more people so that we can share flair bartending to as many people around the world as possible. And also, if you are new around here, hit the subscribe button because I'm posting two videos per week, one on Tuesday, one on Friday, one covering cocktails, one covering the flair bartending techniques such as this video right here. But anyway, that is it. I will, I will stop waffling on. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week, see you then.